My dear mother, first, Narad began with the Brahmin king, who sent him to a king in South India, who sent him to Lord Indra, who sent him to Brahma, who sent him to Lord Shiva. In this way, Narad Rishi traveled the entire universe, searching for the greatest recipient of Sri Krishna's mercy. He had darshan of Prahlad Maharaj, Sri Hanumanji, and the Pandavas. When he entered the Sudharma assembly house, he saw the most exalted Yadavas sitting there in their appropriate seats, garlanded with Parijata flowers. Their bodily effulgence eclipsed the sun. Because they were always anxious to drink the nectar coming from Sri Krishna's lotus face, they surrounded Maharaj Uglashim, respectfully awaiting for Krishna's arrival. However, when Narada arrived there, they ran to welcome and to worship him. Sri Narada began immediately to glorify them as the best recipients of Krishna's mercy. On hearing this, they said, Oh Narada, don't you know? Actually, the only real object of Krishna's mercy is Uddhav. Daily, Uddhav gets the opportunity to eat, rest, and sport with Lord Krishna. And daily, it is only He who gets Sri Krishna's Mahaprasad. Sometimes, while massaging the Lord's legs, Uddhav joyfully falls into slumber with Krishna's feet in His own lap. Maharaj Ugrashen also declared, Yes, although I have prayed for it many times, I cannot keep the company of Krishna because of my many kingly duties. Uddhav, however, is so fortunate because he is always by the side of the Lord. He cannot be cheated by him. Narad became so overwhelmed on hearing the glories of Uddhav that he became immersed in an ocean of ras. Appearing as if possessed by ghosts, he ran down the path to the Lord's residence, which he was familiar with, having been to Gorka many times. Sometimes he danced. Sometimes he fell to the ground. Sometimes he cried out in great distress. And sometimes he exhibited all the symptoms of ecstatic love. Oh, Mother, please help me to keep my composure so that you can further hear this narration. Listen. On that very day, Sri Krishna, for some reason, was feeling despondent and he was still resting in his bedroom chamber. Uddhav was by the door, accompanied with Sri Balaram, Devaki, Rohini, and all the queens headed by Rukmini and Satyabhama. Also, comes of inimical mother Padmavati was there. Passing through the gateway of my ears 
and entering the Monday of my heart. Those words have plundered the treasure of my peaceful composure. Hey, Nara. Hey, Nara, here's your object. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, all-knowing one, O oh, best of the truthful, O oh, best of the sages, whatever you speak is certainly true. All that you have said and more is true. I know this and others know this also. But recently, when I went to Rudge, I experienced something which pulverized my pride for my own good fortune. From this, I came to understand the wonderful sweetness of Sri Krishna, his mercy, his praying, and his beloved devotees. Upon receiving the darshan of the Rajvasis, I considered myself most fortunate. When I repeatedly sang, after going to Raj, about my desire of taking birth as a blade of grass is well known to everyone. O oh, best of sages, how many bowing down before you time and again, I implore you not to desire to hear this narration which is saturated with rust. First, because me, Sachabama, and others are nearby. And secondly, if Sri Shamasundar himself hears it, he will become overwhelmed in Brajva. Dear Uda, there is no need to say more. Please, do not revive the memory of the Brajvasis. By forgiving this memory, I have finally experienced some momentary happiness. When Sri Vasudeva brought me here from Braj, Sri Yashoda cried so bitterly that it melted stone and shattered thunderbolts. Oh, when your master returned from the ashram of his guru, being a fool, I briefly and sadly narrated the plight of the Vrajvasis to him. But his heart was not melted, even a little, so he did not go there. Knowing you to be expert in delivering clever messages, he sent you there instead. Oh, please listen to what I saw with my own eyes. Since Krishna arrived in Braj, from the repeated attacks of demons, serpents, and other fearsome creatures, what calamity meant to destroy Braj did not occur. Still, the Vajvasis never minded, being enchanted by Sri Krishna's sweetness. They wish solely for his own welfare, without a thought of their own. Due to their natural love, everything they did was exclusively for the pleasure of Sri Nanda Nanda. Even then, your master did not do anything for them. So what can I say about now? Being immensely unfortunate, the Rajvasis don't possess even a cent of good fortune and they are submerged in an ocean of anguish. Why then, why do you say that the Vrajvasis are the greatest recipient of your master's mercy? From childhood, Krishna was sent to the cows of those merciless coward men. This, he would take them to graze into this forest full of bramble. It was tortured by hunger. He would only eat some butter. They didn't even give him shoes to wear. Oh. And the coward women? They would tie him up and shout accusations at him. Knowing it to be his unhappy fate, he simply tolerated. So tell me, what more can he do? What more can he do for them? When Krishna and Balaram were very young, they wanted to take the cows to graze. And when they weren't allowed to go, they began to weep, 
So finally, Mother Yashoda let them take the calves to the nearby forest of Vrindavan. She brought very beautiful shoes for Krishna and Balaram to wear. But Krishna told her, The cows are worshipful to us because they are like our mothers. If you want me to wear shoes, then please bring shoes for all 900,000 calves. You must bring 400,000 shoes for each 100,000 cows because they each have four feet. Bring umbrellas for them too, and then I will also use these things. I don't want to be their master. I am a gopa. I want to be a servant of the cows. It is very unfortunate that your master does not even remember the Vrajvasis. Hey, Mother Rohini, how can you talk in this way? You must not know that his heart is softer than butter. Sometimes, while he sleeps at night, he lovingly calls out the name of many cows, like Shamali, Davali, Kalindi, and Gange. Sometimes he calls to his friends, saying, Sridam, Suba, Madamango, the cows are waiting and you're not coming. Come on, I cannot maintain my life without you. Sometimes he pretends to hold his flute to his mouth as he assumes an enchanting threefold bending posture. And sometimes he weeps and cries, Oh mother, where are you? Give me some butter. I want to take maca and roti. Sometimes he calls to me. Oh Radike, hey Lalite, Vishake, where are you? I will die without you. When we see him in such distress, we become plunged in an ocean of sorrow. Last night, Krishna saw something in a dream that caused him to be distressed. Now he only merely weeps, covering his face with cloth. He lies motionless as if sleeping and has not performed any of his daily duties. Oh, Rukmini, why do you utter such nonsense, saying that our husband only becomes like this at night? Even when he is awake, he is dazed and behaves just as he does when he is sleeping. Why is our husband unable to forget the Braj Basis? What is it about Braj that attracts him so much? The gopis have no wealth or ornaments like us. They can only decorate themselves with forest flowers. There, he was just a little coward boy. But here, he is Dwarkadish, the king of kings. And we are his 16,108 wives. We are the most beautiful and qualified women in the entire world. We are so sweet and expert in all the arts, yet all of us together cannot please our husbands. We have been serving him for more than 50 years, but still, our loving service has not controlled him. He never calls out our names, he never thinks, oh, I am in Dwarka with my beloved queens, no, rather, He's always calling out, Hey Radhe, Hey Lalite, Oh Vishake. We are his wives in name only. In reality, even the Dasis of the Braj Gopis are more dear to him than we are. Because we are all engaged in conversing about the plight of the Braj Gopis, my brother is simply exhibiting his expertise in cheating us all by pretending to be afflicted just to hear Mother Rohini speak. I went to Braj in an effort to console all the inhabitants of Braj Bhumi. I stayed there for two months, but neither my words nor my actions could pacify them. 
I could understand that only by the return of my brother would their lives be saved. With great difficulty, I left them and returned here. Arriving, I fretfully said to Krishna, My dear brother, go at once to Raj. You must save their lives. His mouth replied, I am going just now. But the thought of it never reached his heart. Because you can understand a person's heart by their actions. Oh, what you have said is true. Although struck by a great thunderbolt, my heart does not shatter. I have forgotten their extraordinary love for me. How they nurtured me for so long in my childhood. What to speak of being even a little benevolent towards them. Instead, I have been cruel. It caused immense sufferings to their soft hearts. Hey, Brother Uda, you know everything most dear to me. Tell me at once, what, what should I do? Quickly deliver me from this ocean of anguish. Oh, Krishna, you should give your dear friends a grudge whatever they desire. They may want the kingdom, and Krishna might give it away. Hey, Krishna, why do you feel so much remorse? Please, listen to my advice. Trigardacharya will calculate every morsel of food that you and your brother ate at Nanda's house during the 11 years. Then, my husband, he will, he will send twice the amount I swear it. According to this Nanda's discretion, he will maybe reimburse you for looking after the cows all those years. Oh, best of scholars, you know all the aspirations of the Raj Masis. Tell me at once. What do they wish of me? The Vrajvasis do not desire the opulence of kings, nor the celestial possessions of the residents of Swarga, or anything of this world. They only want you. Please listen very carefully. Be merciful to me and listen. And then you can decide for yourself what should be done. Previously, when the Vajvasis saw the clothes and ornaments that you sent back with Sri Nanda, they were plunged into an ocean of grief and said to one another, It is our great misfortune that Krishna thinks we desire these things and giving them to us is his mercy. Then your mother, Sri Yashoda, and all of the residents of Raj, thinking that you will not be returning, began fasting until death. Sri Nanda, thinking that he had committed an offense, became anguished and could not speak for three days. He then concluded the Vajvasis would certainly perish. And so hundreds of times, he repeated your promise that you would certainly return. He said, my son Krishna has given these articles as an indication of his love. He is true to his word. Hearing this from Sri Nanda, the Vajvasis 
He came faithful and reappraising their love, placed those clothes and ornaments upon their bodies. They believed that when you returned and saw these articles, you would realize that they had been obedient to you and therefore you would be even more merciful to them. But when you did not return and sent me there with a message, the French bosses became as if dead. I promised them that you would certainly return and with great difficulty, it was as if I raised them from death to obtain you. They have given up all sensual pleasures and to understand their condition right now, you can ask your elder brother. My dearest ones, after completing my remaining duties and comforting my friends here, I will quickly return. <laughs> oh, Prabhu, you can be certain that without the return of your auspicious lotus feet, the Rajbasis will perish. Oh, oh foolish Devaki. Now, now I have understood. Uddhava, those cunning coward men, they have bewitched Uddhava by feeding him milk. They have bewitched them. Now, they have sent him so that he can bring, so that he can bring Krishna back to that forest that is so dangerous, full of wild beasts. Only to, to protect domestic animals. Hey, Padmavati, mother of Kamsa, what is this nonsense about Krishna being exploited to protect the cows? And Raj, there is no danger of the cows being killed or stolen. So there is no need for someone to protect them. In the morning, the cows go voluntarily to the forests and eat the lush grasses to their heart's content. And then they automatically return to their homes in the evening. In reality, on the pretext of taking the cows to graze, Sri Krishna regularly went into those charming forests with his elder brother in the Sakas, just to enjoy many pastimes there. When Krishna would take the cows out, in separation from him, the Rajvasis consider the day to be as long as Brahma's night, and each moment to be like a yuga. Time and again, they would look at the path by which he would return, at the sun, for indications of when it would set, and for signs of the dust being raised by the cow's hoofs. And when the vibration of his flute was heard, they entered into a state of maddened praying. <coughs> oh, Gargalus child, if this is so, then why now we hear of this? For protection. The cows are almost dying. Hey, brother, what to speak of just the cows, the deer and birds, your beloved trees, the vines and creepers, even the quinges and grass. They've given up their lives for your sake. Only a few humans remain alive. It is a matter of great sorrow to the birch bosses that you remove the poison from Kaliyagat. Otherwise, they would have been able to give up their lives by drinking the poisonous waters. 
The Yamuna River has very little water remaining. It is almost completely dry. Thus, they are unable to drown themselves in it. Hey, brother, please hear another cause of grief. Go over down hill, which you lifted with your lotus hand, has shrunk, so they are unable to give up their lives by jumping from the top of it. Hey, brother, the Graj Basis have given up eating and drinking altogether. But because they still drink the sweet nectar of your holy name, their lives cannot leave them. Now, their only destination is to be consumed by fire in that great dry forest. chambers became grief-stricken and cried out again and again. Hearing the sound of distress, Sri Vasudev and Maharaj Ukrishen, along with all the Yadavas, ran there. And when they saw the condition of Krishna and Balaram, they too wept. And when Bhargacharya, the Brahmins, and the citizens all arrived there, they too cried in the same way. At once, the sound vibration of the weeping of Sri Krishna and his associates pervaded the entire universe, causing great devastation. Knowing this, Sri Brahma knew only Krishna could restore the universe to peace. He saw Sri Narayan Krishna was tormented in his heart due to love for his devotees. And he could understand that the Lord was now anxious to manifest the hidden glories of his devotees' sweet love for him. So he called Garuda, O oh Garuda, in between Mount Raivat and the ocean, there is a Sri Vrindavan constructed by Vishvakarma. There, it is decorated by Murtis of Nanda Maharaj, Brajrani Jashoda, Brajabhasis, and all the cows. While Krishna and Balaram are unconscious, very simply take them to that place. You can also bring Rohini Devi, but no one else. However, <coughs> however, Uthav and the other associates in Dwarka could not bear to leave Krishna in his unconscious state. So they also went. But at Lord Brahma's request, they stood at a distance, watching from a hidden position. Naraji did not go. He felt like such an offender for having caused Krishna to faint. So instead, dressed as a yogi, he was hidden in the sky where he could witness Sri Bhagavan's sweet leaders. <coughs> then, Sri Baladev regained consciousness and he fully understood Brahmaji's intention. Oh my god. 
to the forest, and your sockets have gone ahead with their calling for you to come. Hey, Mother, this morning I have seen many peculiar dreams, which all seem so real. I went to Matura and killed Constantine. I had a great city named Morka constructed on the shore of the ocean. And I cannot quickly describe to you all the rest due to these long, enchanting dreams which seemed like ages. I was not able to rise at the usual time. Hey, brother, if you will not consider it a lie, when we go to the forest, I will tell you in detail about these highly astonishing dreams. Oh, child, because you are her only son, today your mother is worried because you slept so long. What need is there of speaking more to her? Your friends and your sockets and cows have already gone far ahead into the forest, and you should quickly follow them. I will prepare your lunch for you and send it to the forest. <laughs> Thank you, Mother. Oh, Queen of my life, why do you not speak? Are you feeling Jealous today? Knowing everything, you have ascertained what I saw in my dream this morning. Yes, now I understand. You must know that I left you, went to another place, and married many princesses. But please, hear the cause for it. They were all extremely anxious. Married. And if I had not fulfilled their desires, they would have certainly perished. I also had many children and grandchildren. What has happened, happened. Now I must quickly proceed to the forest. Now, tonight you shall be children. Listen with full attention. When Sri Devaki saw Krishna playing the flute, dressed in charming forest attire, none of which she had ever seen before, milk began to flow from her breasts. Seeing him like this for the first time, Rukmini and Jambavati became astonished and bewildered by Mahabharata. Overcome with Amr's desires, Satyabhama and even old Padmavati ran after Sri Krishna to chase him, to catch him. But Kalindi, who had seen Krishna like this before, kept her composure and with Uddhav checked them forcibly. Maid servants of the power girls. 
Oh, have with it, Padmavati. What is so astonishing about this? In our previous lives, Vasudev and I performed austerities to obtain Sri Bhagavan as our son. But Nanda and Yasoda prayed to Lord Brahma for Krishna Bhakti. They performed, they nurtured him in so many ways. Therefore, it is entirely proper that Krishna should have this bhav towards them. And this bhav is also very dear to me. The gopi's praying is far superior than ours. We are engaged in activities related to our dharma, karma, children, and our homes. We serve Krishna with awareness of his majesty. The gopis serve Krishna solely and with pure bhav. They have abandoned their husbands and have no desire for the pleasures of this world or the next. Therefore, we should not be jealous of them. We should praise that bhav which brings Krishna under the service of his dear devotees. that of chivalry. And after becoming aware of these topics, Sri Krishna at once abandoned his previous state of being spellbound in separation. Hey brother, who is this sore younger brother of Salda? Alone, I will go there now and destroy him. But then, Krishna saw the flute in his hand, and he remembered that he was just leaving his house to take the cows grazing. Then he 
he became simultaneously wonderstruck and doubtful. He began to laugh. Balaram informed him that actually it was Brahmaji's arrangement all along. Then they went to the ocean to bathe, wiping all the dust from their limbs, and Garuda carried them back to their palace. By these intimate pastimes, we can understand that the residents of Braj are indeed the supreme recipient of Sri Krishna's full mercy and affection. And of them, the Braj gopis are the ultimate supreme devotees. Sri Uddhav helped the queens regain their consciousness and by hand signals he motioned for them to go to the Lord. They were crying and offering prayers at his lotus feet and eventually they were able to appease their husband. Dear Uddhav, where is Tachi Rama? Oh Prabhu, when you were at the Sri Vrindavan, which was constructed at Raiva Hill, your bob was such that many could not understand it. Sri Rukmini was glorifying the Raj Gopi's super excellent love for you. The other queens approved of her words, but Sri Sachivama could not tolerate them and has fled to the chamber of jealous love. Oh, bring that foolish child here at once. Oh, Mother, please, try to understand. Sri Satyabhama was immersed in this jealous love because she wanted to try to please her husband, Sri Krishna. But Sri Krishna is Rasi only for the frame of the gopis. So he was not pleased at all. When Satyabhama heard the message from her maidservants, at once she bathed, put on her ornaments and ran there to Krishna. But being ashamed, embarrassed, and fearful, she hid behind a pillar. Oh, narrow-minded daughter of Satrajit, just as you have become jealous many times before, such as when Rukmini received the Parijata flower, you have now become jealous <coughs> upon seeing the pinnacle of praying which the bride vessels possess for me. If I were to go there now, I do not see what it would be for their welfare. Upon seeing me, their intense love would overflow, and in great distress, they would become spellbound. What to speak of forgetting their bodies? They would forget their very selves. Their suffering would not be lessened on seeing me. Even whatever activities I could perform for their welfare would double their agony because they would be anguished in fear of being separated from me again. Indeed, I am not able to repay my debt to them, and therefore, I am a great debtor. Not seeing me now, sometimes being afflicted by the burning desire of separation, they become like corpses, and sometimes being maddened, they experience various we gods. Oh, proud and jealous girl, when I separated from the branch bones, I had no desire to marry. But when from the hands of a Brahmin, I received a pathetic letter from Rukmini saying that if I did not accept her, she would give up her life. I snatched her away from those wicked kings. When, 
go to Krishna and appease their husband. <coughs> then, Sri Rohini and Devaki were asked to bring Krishna's meal. My Lord, Sri Narada is standing at the door. <coughs> Why has he stopped there? Why doesn't he come near as before? Oh, Prabhu, he does not come out of fear and shame. My dear friend, Mercy. O swan who resides 
on the pond of the Bajbasi's praying. Firstly, I ask that I always relish the sweet narrations of your beautiful pastime of Bajbash. And that I may travel the whole universe and distribute this sweet mercy to all others. And secondly, I ask that anyone who faithfully hears or narrates these sweet pastimes attain Sri Krishna praying for your lotus feet, which are tinged with the kumkum and the gobis. My oh, mother. So. Joy! Joy! My oh, mother, taking permission from Sri Krishna, Narada returned to Prayag, and when he described the glories of bhakti to the munis there, they completely renounced their non-devotional sadhan practices and fully adopted the worship of the lotus feet feet of Madan Gopal. Did I go to Fremana? and who is the recipient of most high of Krishna mercy. You know, knew that most recipient of, of Patra of Krishna gopis and among gopis oh Radhika, top By remembering the name of Radhika, he used to faint. <coughs> so I first am giving blessing to Nara, who was the reason for all sweet pastimes. And also he had a boon from Krishna too. Who will remember all these three pastimes? They will have, they will attain by the mercy of Krishna all oh, this high class of love and affection. And those who will go in the doubt, in the three pastime places, oh, Krishna should be merciful <coughs> to give them love and affection, like gopis. So, my blessing to Lord. <laughs> to compile the, this story, 
Ahí va. Very excellent and very expert qualified. Good debate. That she, she uh, met this story. I don't know whether all they are weeping or they are they were pretending to be. But myself, I could not check myself. So many uh, good and senior, sincere devotees, they may also have lived by this pathetic story of pleasure. So, I am giving blessing to what name? Mother Mohini. I want that she should attract even Krishna. <laughs> and Krishna will be pleased by attracted by her. But mostly in these prayers, oh, my most blessings to Krishna. the son of Druvil Devan. Once Parma in his yoga, in her yoga, oh, went to a garden and there on the bank of Jamuna and Drumul that was there. He came at kidnapped. So from Drumul that the curse was given birth. So she told, Oh Padmavati, the mother of Kans. So, he was even too old, but when he saw the poses of Krishna and dancing and all the, that how Krishna with his flow, oh, uh, trust his flow in the, yeah, in the lift, lift of Radhika. Though Radhika was still a statue, but even, so, my blessing to what? Second? Second daughter. Rog Lata. Very good. Also, speak for Radha and Krishna. Yes, or try to be. Then write in the subsequent. Oh, Uddhava, what I will tell about Uddhava? What this would be? Oh. Like Uddhava. So much affection for Krishna. So my blessings to you. <laughs> then, oh, Ma Mother Rohini. Oh, very good, very good. I'm very happy. Ready, <laughs> <laughs> you. You do it marvelous. 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 So my heartly blessings to you. Oh, 
बट भाई नो इज होल फैमिली एंड होल वाइफ एंड ऑल डॉटर्स आर हियर ओनली नॉट सन सो ऑल्सो क्वीन राधिका टू बी कैम राधिका रमेश डॉट एंड सत्यभाम आओ माई हार्डली ब्लेसिंग टू सत्यभाम हाउ सी फोल वैन ही सॉ द ग्लोरी ऑफ ही आर हार्ड द ग्लोरी ऑफ गोपीज he saw that as he says firing in jailer so thank you and my blessings to you second daughter or third this is third fourth fourth the third first fourth and नंद बाबा एंड जसोदा भैया एस्पेशली राधिका इन ए स्टेच्यू वेरी गुडोरी किशोरी किशोरी वेरी गुड रुक्मिणी आई वेरी गुड रुक्मिणी अहो वेरी गुड गौर प्रिया वाट ने राधा प्रिया वेरी गुड एंड हो मो ओ आई वॉन्ट टू गिव माई ब्लेसिंग महाराज परीक्षित एंड मदर देव की Yes, sir. Five star. Huh? And who who became that? You, Newton. What? Who who? Canada. Canada. What what role he did? Huh? Rupa Mandir. So, my blessing to you all. Thank you. And the blessing that we get to realize Krishna Prem, that we are uh, explaining to the Sattva and all other things, it should come in your heart. Oh, playing on instruments. Oh. Krishna Kanta. Oh, Mr. Kailas. <laughs> Hello, near you. I'm seeing. Close here. Close here. Close here. My blessing to. I'm blessing to all audience. Yeah. I could not hear any anyone's voice. All were totally immersed in hearing and seeing this. Present and free for them. I also want to give my blessing who managed everything in the guidance of Nirgun Prabhu and his wife. What? Not lucky. Oh, head hold up the book 
and all those who helped. My blessing also to the sannyasi who helped me in the sense of heart. No blessing to me. I I was uh, sleeping and taking <laughs> I'd like to offer millions of obeisances to my spiritual master, Iti Lila Vishnu, Vishnupad, Parabahansa, Parabhita, Asitara, Shishimad, Bhaktivedanta Swami, Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada. And the same to my Shiksha Guru, Om Vishnupad, Parabahansa, Parivaja, Asitara, Shishimad, Bhaktivedanta, Srila Narayan Rai. Really? The whole festival is because of him. One thing, so all of you have done so many things that I could never repay you. And I'm simply your servant, and I'm so I feel so lucky to be able to serve Shiguru and the Vaishnavas. Thank you very much. The list is long because it was a large festival. And um, I'd like to give honor to first the kitchen crew. Ramaraj <laughs> Prabhu. <laughs> Along with my wife and Shikandi Didi. <laughs> they, they held the whole thing together as well. Everyone was doing so. And also Ramakrishna, Radhanath from Hawaii, Gayani, Sedanandi, and Vyasapal. Also Manmohan and Swati for cooking the feast last night. Abhi Ram and Venu Gopal for washing all the pots after Ramakush. <laughs> also, to thank Dachai for serving out after every meal. <clears throat> In the festival, before the festival, so many people came to help set the festival up. And uh, Govardhan, uh, he came 10 days early and did so much. <laughs> Kamalakanta Prabhu, Bhishma, the son of Madan, Kadadhara, Obi Kanta, Boko Balaba, Balaram, Sahade, and for all for the plays and all the help in the festival, Nanda Gopal and his family, Mani Bhai, Sridhar, Rajendra Nandan, Boko Nandini, and open up in, in huge boga runs, as you can imagine. Madan Mohan for making wonderful pizza. Richard Manjari for baking wonderful things. Also, I want to ask your forgiveness for any of my offenses. And kindly forgive me. And please give your blessings so that I may gradually make some bhakti. Thank you very much.
tomorrow. In morning I am going, but festival will be up to tomorrow and Hari Katha as is well. And I invite you all, if you can, come to San Francisco as we be very happy. I, and I will continue my same subject there also. Though it is very lengthy, but we will try to continue something as much as we can. So one name I forgot to tell. Oh, who is giving? What? Injection and uh, what? Needle. Oh, that's Sajjan Maharaj. <laughs>